If you watched Fresno State early in the 2021 season, you saw a team that was tough as nails and wasn't afraid to challenge Power 5 teams. You saw it against Oregon when they nearly upset the Ducks, and then you saw it against UCLA in one of the more thrilling games of 2021. The 10 guys that we talk about today are a big reason why many predict them to win the Mountain West, but it's also a reason why this is going to be an exciting team, even with some of the big losses that they have on offense and defense. Now, they do lose Kalen DeBoer to Washington. The head coach leaves, nearly took his quarterback with him, but they have a coach coming back in Jeff Tedford that is very familiar with the program, returns to campus to make a triumphant return, hopefully, and he's got the talent that hopefully brings them to the top of his conference and bring home, brings home a title and maybe even a New Year's Six bull berth. Jake Hayner is getting a lot of love at the next level. He's getting some NFL attention after a season in which he threw for over 4,000 yards and 33 touchdowns. Jake Hayner is a gamer, and he does have some talent that will really work for him at the next level but he's just a gamer the guy competes and he's one of the best competitors in college football if you look you know case in point was the UCLA, UCLA game you look at what he did against the Bruins his uh, tenacity to be able to take hits and keep coming back and making incredible throws if you haven't watched that game go back and watch it but also against Oregon the first game of the season typically everybody's nervous and the upset isn't highly likely but Jake Hayner put on a show and he made some throws that you really believe that he can be successful at the next level. He, he was incredibly good at, at throwing his guys open. He's good at extending plays and, and throwing on the run because a lot of times Oregon was pressuring him. But this is a guy who is going to be thrilling to watch once again, exciting to throw the football, and with the guys that he has returning at the pass-catching positions as well as the guy who's going to join him in the backfield – this is an offense that's going to be incredibly tough to stop in 2022. And then joining him in the backfield is Jordan Mims. Now, losing Ronnie Rivers was going to be a loss. Everybody knew that was going to hurt, and everybody knew losing him presents challenges for the rushing attack. However, you have a, essentially a bigger and stronger version of Ronnie Rivers in Jordan Mims. Over 1,000 yards total for for rushing and receiving last year and he had a total of 10 touchdowns this is a guy who is going to be just as good as rivers if not better i really like what he's capable of doing he's a strong runner between the tackles he averaged 5.6 yards per carry he also averaged 13 yards per catch so he does a little bit of everything just like ronnie rivers did so even if the rushing attack isn't going to be as prominent maybe it will be under tedford but if it's not going to be then you can still utilize him as a pass catcher and the offense doesn't skip a beat because he returns and he's going to be, like I said, just as good, if not better than his predecessor. The defensive line took a big hit and we expected that with the number of seniors that Fresno State had on their team. But David Perales is back, 13 and a half tackles and seven sacks. It was kind of hard to stand out, especially with Aaron Mosby just wrecking everybody. But David Perales had a productive year and it's going to be fun to see what he can do is as a senior this year this is a defense with still a ton of talent the defensive line took probably the biggest hit of everybody so they need to find some talent but a veteran like Perales is going to get them up to speed pretty quick back to the offense a lot of people doubted Jalen Cropper heading into the season and I don't think people expected what they got now nearly had a thousand yards receiving and had 11 touchdowns, so there is something to maybe there's some hesitations in terms of his explosiveness, but I think if they line him up in the right spot, if they line out maybe more outside, they can utilize his talent more because Jalen Cropper is an incredible talent. He's an incredible pass catcher who can make tough catches, who can be explosive, and he can make defenses pay if they don't guard him correctly or allow him to get in space. So I think that having Hayner back and having his top target in Jalen Cropper makes this offense really exciting. It just comes down to what are they going to use because things are going to be different. Now that DeBoer is gone, the offense is going to look different. The defense is going to look different. And it's because of personnel, but also the scheme and what they're going to try to do. They're probably going to move guys around. Personnel isn't going to be the same as last year. 
just from a, strictly a number standpoint of the actual people playing the positions, but also the guys returning, where are they going to line up? And I, I'm really excited to see how they use Cropper and how they make him even better than he was last year. Back to defense, Evan Williams is one of the best safeties in college football. If you haven't watched him, I highly recommend it. Had 90 tackles, four and a half tackles for loss, four passes defended, three interceptions. He is a leader of the defense, does a little bit of everything. And one of the biggest things is he's not afraid to get his, get his nose dirty. He is not afraid to step up, charge downhill, and make a play. And you saw that in the Oregon game plenty of times. You saw him go downhill and make plays to stop a run, either from you know near the backfield, in the backfield, or more importantly, stopping it at the second level if the linebackers weren't there. So I'm really excited to watch him again. He's going to be a fun player uh, and a guy that you can use all around the field that gives you some versatility, especially with the defensive backs that they have returning. There's a lot of experience, so that allows you to do a little bit different things than maybe a new a defense that doesn't have as experienced players, and that's really exciting if you're a Bulldogs fan. Maybe a more explosive option than Jalen Cropper is Josh Kelly, a guy who averaged 15 yards per catch, does return as well. Again, another guy who can make those catches in traffic. He can make big plays and someone that you definitely need to keep an eye on in 2022. Everything starts with obviously with Jake Hayner, but the guys returning around him makes this offense really exciting. It's, the passing attack is going to be lethal. Jordan Mims is going to be solid as a runner, and I, I think that if you add everything up, this is going to be one of the tougher offenses to stop in college football, and Josh Kelly is just another receiver that Hayner can utilize and make teams pay. Linebacker Lavelle Bailey wasn't the leader of the defense last year, but he returns as a veteran and is going to be a leader after a year with you know 56 tackles, eight and a half tackles for loss, and did a little bit in the passing game too. Six passes defended, an interception, also had three sacks. He, he's a guy who is maybe not the biggest linebacker, and that's one of the things with the group of five. You're not going to get these guys that you typically see at the Alabamas, at the Georgias. You know, they're not going to have prototypical size, but that doesn't mean they can't be good at their job. They can't be good at their position. And Lavelle Bailey is a guy who is a playmaker. He's going to get in the right position. He's going to make plays. And now this year, his bigger challenge is going to be getting everybody, especially in front of him, in position as well. I think a player to keep an eye on, maybe a dark horse, is Nico Remigio. I'm really excited to see what he adds to this passing attack. Again, Fresno State's passing attack is going to be fun. It's just a matter of how they utilize their players. In 2019 at Cal, he had 513 yards with Steven with three touchdowns. And I think with everybody focusing on Jalen Cropper and Josh Kelly, a guy like him can really step up and stand out. We talked about the secondary before, and there's a couple more guys that we're going to talk about. Elijah Gates had a solid year last year and you know this the mountain west is a good conference and there's some talented wide receivers that they're going to face and especially with the the non-conference play that they're going to have this year the non-conference schedule they'll face this is a team that's going to be tested in the secondary and a guy like elijah gates can be a, a, maybe not you know he could be a lockdown corner for them and that's huge because they're going to use evan williams all around the field like i said the experience they have returning allows them some versatility in their scheme it gives them some depth at positions and a guy like elijah gates is going to be a huge playmaker for them and finally joining williams in the secondary on the back end is lj early another player that can do a little bit of everything maybe not to the level of evan williams he's probably going to be the guy that plays more deep but I really like, again, I just like this group. This is a good secondary for a good team that is going to have big aspirations in 2022. I think a New Year's Six Bowl game is the goal. I think it has to be. Even with some of the guys that they lose. Now, yeah, there's some concerns on the line, but you have plenty of talent coming in. And it's not like the coaching is going to take a step back either. There's, there's a good coaching staff in place still. You have an elite quarterback. You have an elite running back. And you have a great group of wide receivers that are going to make life miserable for the teams that they face. So big things coming for Fresno State. Something that te the Fresno State Bulldogs fan base should be very excited about. And 2022, I think, has a lot of good things in store for this team.